In this video, I'm just going to look at the interface of 90 Second Website Builder's software. 90 Second Website Builder's interface uh, defaults to what you're looking at now, pretty much. Um, a standard toolbox on the left-hand column. And then out here in the middle, this area we call the canvas or the workspace is where you build your website. I've got one open now that I've been working on as a demo. And I'm moving stuff around right here. This is the canvas. And then, of course, there's the menu bars. Just like with any Windows application, you're going to have a series of menu items at the top. Let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing here so you can be more acquainted with what's what. Underneath the menu bar are some other custom menu bars, you might say. You'll notice that as I hover over the edge of these, I can drag them around. So I can move these menu bars wherever I want them to be. I can even drag them out into the canvas area and store them right out in front of me like a toolbox if I, if I want to use them out here. I can do that with any menu bar and any toolbox. I can also add menu bars or toolboxes by right clicking. There's a whole list of the uh, menu bars or toolboxes or inspectors that I could work with. So if I want the Align Tools menu to show, I just simply click on it and here it is. And I can use it up here, or I can, again, drag it out into my workspace and use it that way. And this is true for any of the toolboxes, even the major toolbox. The main toolbox here that stores all of the functions of 90 Second Website Builder can be moved around. I can just drag it like this, and I can, if I prefer to store it right here, keep it next to me. Or I can keep it at the bottom. It's kind of a cool thing. If I go like this, I can store my tools down here or if I'd rather store them at the top, they'll go here, etc. The idea is you can store them wherever you want to. The default location is here. That's usually where I like to keep the tools. The same is true over on the right hand side of the screen. As you can see right now, uh, I just have the site manager showing. Move the camera over a little bit here so you can see what I mean. So here's the site manager and the reason why that's showing is because I want it to. You can decide which tools show and which ones don't by going to the view. You can see site managers check but if I wanted the properties inspector to show as well I would check that and you can see that now appears down here. But it doesn't have to show here. Like with anything else I can grab it and I can move it around. I can store it up on top put the site manager down here. The point I'm making is you have control over where all of these toolboxes appear on your screen and which ones show and which ones hide. There are some that uh, you might not even be familiar with. There's a layer manager. If I select that, if I'm working with layers, I might want to keep that nearby or I might want to store it someplace else. The point is you can customize the layout of your tools. If you're working a lot with text, this, this is the format toolbox up here. And if you're working a lot with text, you might want it near you. You might want to keep it in a, in a more convenient location so that you can uh, access it easier as you're working with that text. It defaults to being up here because that's where most people are going to want to keep it. You'll notice too that uh, this particular toolbar is for working with images. And uh, if, I am not, if I have not selected an image, it's grayed out. As soon as I select an image, it highlights. So I know that's active. So that's pretty much how you work with toolbars. This is pretty standard in a lot of Windows applications that you can lay out your screen the way you want it to. This is how I normally use mine with the toolbar, the toolbox collection over here on the left, and the site manager, and the properties inspector on the right. I don't normally use the properties inspector as much as the other tools because I find that I get that same information that properties gives me just by double clicking on an object I get the properties of that object. Almost every item on your canvas can be double clicked on so that you can get the properties of that particular item. Let's talk very quickly about the specific functions that are up here in the menu bar. Of course the file menu is standard just like you would use with any Windows application. This is where you would create a new website, open an existing website, close your work, save your work. You can even open a site from a template or you can make a template. In other words, the website you have been working on 
If you want to save that as a template for you to work on later or even for somebody else to use, you can do that. So you can create your own templates. This is where you'd preview your work in a browser if you want to publish, open up the recent documents or exit out of the program. This is a very standard file menu. If we go to edit, again, you'll see some familiar things like undo, cut, copy, paste, delete, all of these things, select, find and replace. Here's something that's interesting and that is the lock feature. You have the ability to lock certain items. Now why would you want to do that? Well, the reason you would is because since everything in 90 second is movable, you might find that as your website gets kind of cluttered up with stuff, you're going to find that you move something that you don't want to move and you just want it to stay in place. I've done that before like if I want to select several items and all of a sudden I'm moving something I didn't want to move I can prevent that from happening by putting something in place and then locking it. So I've just selected this image and if I also select lock now that image will not move and when I hover over you even see a picture of a little padlock it means I can't move that image right now even if I wanted to. So as I'm moving other things I can't move that image. It is locked. I can do that by right clicking as well. Here I'm going to unlock it. So you'll find that uh, in the edit menu you have some things that are unique to 90 Second Website Builder like the locking tools but also some standard features that are in most Windows programs. Certain things that on your website you don't want to publish. You're just working with these uh, on your computer but you don't want to publish them. You can rotate things Restore the original size is a great feature. Sometimes when you're working with an image, say let's let's take this image, move this out of the way. Take this image and let's say I've resized it a number of times and I made it too big and oh that's too pixelated and now it's all distorted and I, I, I've got it all messed up and instead of having to figure out what the original size was, all I have to do as long as the image is selected is go to edit, restore original size, and 90 second will restore the image back to its real original size. Kind of handy. In the view menu bar, this is basically where we select the menu bars we want to work with, which we talked about a few minutes ago. Which toolbars I want to show, which ones I don't want to show. So for example, my site manager is showing, but I don't need the layer manager to show. I decide all of that here. I can also uh, let the grid show. Now the grid is simply sort of an visible layer of dots. You can see that just appeared in my canvas. This is only something that I can that I would see during the design mode. And these grids, these little dots would help me line things up. If I'm making lines, if I want to make sure everything lines up, I could use this grid to kind of, kind of keep my work straight. And again, when you publish, you wouldn't see those dots. Another function in the uh, view is uh, the snap to grid. So if I'm if I have this on and I'm moving things around, you'll see that the images seem a little choppy and jumpy. That's because when I let go they're going to snap to the nearest dot in my grid. That just sort of helps keep things lined up. So I'm going to unselect snap to grid and unselect grid because I don't want to use those right now. You can see the dots went away. Under the page menu, this is where I would just add a new page or open a page from a template. I can clone a page if I've got a page I've, I like and I want to make a copy of it. Just clone that page, delete them, rename them. Anything that has to do with page, pages, page properties, the HTML of a page, I can view by clicking here. Here's what the HTML looks like. I can insert HTML in certain parts of the page if I want to. So anything that has to do with a page or page properties um, can be found in this menu. Here's where I can insert objects. Now, basically the insert menu is just a duplicate of the toolbox that I keep over here. So this toolbox that I normally keep along the left hand side has all of the objects and tools that I could use. So in other words if I want to put an image I would of course go here and grab image and, and do that. But another way to do it is to use the, the insert menu. And so here I would select image and it lets me decide where to get that image. So it's just another way to work with the tools. A lot of people like using drop down menus because we're familiar with those. And then there's just a number of, of uh, sub-menus because each of these are categories in the toolbox and then these, these would be the subcategories. Under format, this is where we're working with text and so if I want that text to be bold or italicized, etc., I would do that here. It's the equivalent of this menu, this toolbar right here. 
if I notice it's grayed out, so if I'm working with text like this, now it's not grayed out. I can format the text that I'm that I've selected here. But that's what this is. This is the format menu version of this toolbox. Same thing. Tables, this is an uncommon thing to use, but there are times when you want to put a table on your website, and this simply does that. In most cases, 90 Second Website Builder uh, makes websites without the use of tables, which is a better idea these days because tables get pretty cumbersome. But there are rare occasions where you might need to make a table, say if you're presenting some financial statistics or whatever, you can do that with this. Arrange is just helps you align your objects or space them evenly or center them. So for example, if I wanted th this object and this object to be lined up, I've just selected both of them, I could align them according to the left side and see their, their left edges have aligned because this object actually is way over here. The globe starts way over here and then this starts here so they've aligned or I could uh, and you can see their centers align so that's a pretty uh, pretty handy tool when you're working with objects and you want to keep things in, lined up and in certain spots on your website you can also make images be the same size you can merge uh, different images into one image so you can keep them all together etc under tools these are basically uh, some some of them slightly more advanced where you're going to manage your assets or the objects of your website. You can um, create a site map, which is very important to do for search engine optimization. Verify the links, make sure you don't want any broken links. Any any options for the uh, program that you'd want to set, you would do here. We'll make another video specifically about some of those. And then of course the help topics are here. So that's just a, an overview of getting around in 90 Second Website Builder. Just know that you can lay out your, your um, interface pretty much the way you want to, whatever's comfortable for you, your canvas or your workspace in the center, and your toolboxes, whichever ones you want to use, just laid out wherever they're convenient for you. And that's it. That's how you get around the 90 Second Website Builder interface.